Hey guys, what's up? Jay's Two Cents here bringing you a really informal and very candid video as I try and get comfortable here of a client build that I'm doing called Project Red Mist. Now this is something I've never done on my channel before and I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna be bringing you kind of a progress build log of all the things that are gonna be happening in this system as they happen. So make sure you guys stay tuned to find out what's going in Project Red Mist, find out just how beastly overkill, uber awesome mode this computer's gonna be, and you can drool over it just like I can. Even though it's not mine, I kinda wish it was, and it's quite literally gonna put my system to shame, and that's just depressing. Now let's go ahead and talk about the parts that are going in this build, and that's going to be part one. We're going to talk about what's going in the system, the uh, you know the the rationale of the parts that we chose, and we're going to talk about the fifteen hundred dollar water cooling system that's going to be going in this beast, this absolute beast of a computer. Okay, so as you can see behind me, I have a whole gambit of parts. In fact, you may or may not be able to see it super clearly, but I have a Case Labs SM8 Magnum case. It is absolutely massive. And we went with white because I think white cases are just, I love white cases. They don't show dust very much and they just look really clean when you do the build right. And I know some of you guys may be going, oh, white case, that just seems really weird. Uh, wait till the build is done and you guys might change your tune. As you can see inside the case, we have an Asus Republic of Gamers Maximus 6 Formula motherboard. That's a Z87 chipset with all the bells and whistles that you'd come to expect from Asus Republic of Gamers line. It's hard to say. The Asus Republic of Gamers line, and that is going to be the backbone of the entire system. Going inside that, of course, as you can imagine, is an Intel 4770K. Now, the buyer bought all these parts, he had them shipped to him and then delivered to me. So, I hope he has better luck at uh, the chip lottery than I've had with Haswell. I've had some pretty poor overclocking 4770Ks, so I hope his luck fares better than mine. Now, supplying that CPU with all of its memory needs is the Corsair Dominator Platinum uh, 2133 megahertz RAM. 32 gigabytes of it. Way, way, way more RAM that's ever gonna be needed for this system. Uh, but you know, the buyer was kind of like, go big or go home. So that's exactly what he did with the RAM right there. Now we are also for storage going to be putting in, uh, it's a little bit underwhelming actually. For storage, we've got a uh, Samsung 500 gigabyte um, 840 Evo SSD, so 500 gigabyte SSD, and a one terabyte Western Digital Black Drive. Now he can easily add more storage if he needs it later, uh, but it is a little bit underwhelming though, considering the rest of the parts going in this system. But he'll find out soon enough if, you know, 1.5 terabytes is or is not enough storage space. And then if he needs to put in another hard drive, he can certainly do that. I'll have it pre-wired for him in case he needs it, simple enough. Now, when it comes to powering it all, we have a Corsair 1200i, power supply, it's kind of covered by some boxes there, but a 1200i power supply, way more than enough power to power the GTX 780 Ti Super Clock Edition graphics cards from EVGA. So we're going with two GTX 780 Ti's in two-way SLI, and we are gonna be overclocking and water cooling those cards as well. So we can expect a lot of power with a lot lower temperature threshold in the card. I'm guessing somewhere in the 40s, mid 40 degrees Celsius range. The water cooling stuff, as you can see, we've got a lot of boxes here. In fact, that's not even all of it. I just kind of put the cool stuff on display where you could see it. It's mostly an EK build when it comes to the water cooling loops. And I say loops because we have two loops going in this system. A dedicated graphics card loop and a dedicated CPU motherboard loop. That's right, we are gonna be water cooling the motherboard, but we're not using the built-in motherboard uh, block that is on the Maximus. We've gone with the EK full kit for the Maximus 6 formula that includes the uh, South Bridge as well as the VRMs and chipset up on the north side of the motherboard. So. We're gonna be putting in the EK block for that, and as well as the EK supremacy block for the CPU. Now when it comes to GPU blocks, we're gonna be putting in the exact same blocks that I put on my 780s, on the 780 Ti's, they're the nickel version full cover uh, with acetal and their matching uh, back plates. I think they're called the Jetstream back plates. They're a really nice machining job on there. They look very, very slick. So we're gonna be putting that on the GTX 780 Ti's. Now housing all of the fluid is gonna be two EK uh, 250 multi-option reservoirs. They are the 
what do they call them, the Res X3. So they're gonna be a lot of different options and configurations for the Res. Uh, two of those, which are going to be, you know, like I said, independently feeding the CPU motherboard and as well as the GPUs. Now for radiators, down in the bottom, we are gonna be putting a four times 140 millimeter radiator for 560 millimeters of effective cooling space. That is massive. In fact, if you take a look, you can see that the 560 rad absolutely dwarfs the 480 rad, which is already huge. I've never really seen a 480 rad look so small. But yeah, because it fits it natively, we're gonna go ahead and put in that massive radiator and we're gonna be putting some Corsair AF140 fans on those to keep them nice and cool. I wish Corsair made an SP140 for the static pressure, but it's not gonna really matter. These are low, FP, low FPI or fins per inch radiators anyway. Now for pumps, we're gonna be using two of the EKD5 uh, Vario X tops. They basically are just uh, like a solid piece of palm on there with a couple of different fitting options. Uh, they just look really, really nice. So we're gonna be using two of those and sleeving the cables because the cables are not sleeved from the factory uh, to power both of our independent loops. Now, one thing that I'm really excited about with this build is I'm gonna get to finally bring you guys a project featuring something I've wanted to show you for a long time. And that is bending acrylic tubing. As you can see, we have got 24 feet of acrylic tubing, 24 feet. That way we can make sure for any mistakes that I'm guaranteed to probably screw up on because bending acrylic tubing is never easy. Uh, but I did, we did get the uh, appropriate acrylic bending kit with the proper saw and the heat gun and, and the tube that you insert into it to, for a mandrel bend. It's gonna, it's gonna all be shown in a later video in the series. So I finally will get to show you guys that. And of course we have all of the matching Primo Chill uh, revolver fittings right here, which are basically a compression fitting for rigid tubing that is gonna be keeping everything plumbed and connected together quite nicely. So there you go. Oh, and for fans, I uh, forgot to mention, because we are gonna be putting a 560 alpha cool on the bottom and a 480 in the top we've got four times sp120 quiet edition fans for the upper radiator four times 140 millimeter S, uh, af140 fans for the bottom we've got uh, af120 fans for the front pulling air in and then we've got an af120 fan for the rear exhausting air as well and as well as the top rad will be exhausting air out of the case so there you go guys now, this kit wouldn't necessarily be complete uh, without all of the miscellaneous stuff to put it all together. And that's what this looks like. Basically, lots and lots of basic different fittings here that are needed to make various bends and angles on certain areas where bending the acrylic may not make sense. And an awful lot of cable management. Guys, these are, these are cable splitters, cable extensions, sleeved cables. I mean, you mentioned it, we, and uh, as well as adapter boards where we can divide power to multiple fans with one plug. So that's what all of this looks like, and there is quite a bit of it there. And we've got all sorts of miscellaneous stuff. Oh, and one thing I did forget to mention, it'd be nice if I told you guys what we were actually using for coolant. So we are going with Mayhem's Pastel White for one of the loops. This is the concentrated for that. And then we are going with Mayhem's X1 Blood Red for probably the GPU loop. So that's gonna look really slick. Since this is an ROG themed build, we've got white, black, and red heavily going on in this build. So guys, that has been Project Red Mist here on Jay's Two Cents, part number one. I hope you guys will check out the series as it happens, as I make progress on the build, which will take several weeks, maybe even a month or more, uh, putting this all together, paying extreme attention to detail with the lighting, which is not here yet, the lighting, and just making everything look as hidden yet clean as possible. I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. I'm gonna show you the progress as it happens and we'll keep this series updated with the awesome computer porn that is gonna be happening, absolutely no doubt. And since this computer puts mine to shame, it's at least fun that I get to be the one to fondle it. The computer that is. Yeah, the computer has made, made that perfectly clear. I mean, this isn't bump hunting or anything like that. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get the hell on out of here. We'll see you guys in part two. Uh, as always, follow me on Twitter if you wanna talk about Project Red Mist, Facebook, or I'll just see you in my next video.